I'm Maggie Kuhl on the communications team at the Michael J. Fox Foundation. We fund research to better define, measure, and treat Parkinson's disease. Technology is allowing scientists to scan the smallest, deepest parts of ourselves, the genes and proteins that make us who we are. Today to talk about this research are two of our staff scientists, Drs. Bradford Casey and Dr. Samantha Hutton. Okay, Bradford, it's been a while since high school biology. DNA, RNA, proteins, can you give me a primer? Uh, we can think of an analogy being that the DNA might be like a recipe book, right? That recipe book is gonna have a lot of individual recipes, those are the genes, right? And those are transcribed into, uh, into the actual finished product by the chef, which would be RNA. The dishes might represent proteins or other components, right? And so essentially, all of these are critical for understanding how it is that, uh, that our body's cells work. Samantha, can you tell us about our research strategy in this area? Sure, so uh, the study of DNA and RNA and protein, we like to do these types of studies that can really get into the basic biology of the underlying cause of Parkinson's disease and its associated progression, um, because that really tells us what's going on at a cellular level. But then we also need really great ways to be able to measure these things that are relevant to Parkinson's disease, so that armed with an understanding of the biological cause and ways to measure it, we can then uh, take this cellular dysfunction and really stop it in its tracks or offset it uh, with specific treatments. And a lot of this work is happening in our big landmark study, the Parkinson's Progression Markers Initiative. Yes, that's right. Uh, Parkinson's Progression Marker Initiative, or PPMI study, uh, follows roughly 1,400 participants around the world. These are people with Parkinson's disease, uh, healthy volunteers, and people that are at risk to potentially develop a Parkinson's disease, perhaps through a genetic mutation or another risk factor. Um, and our uh, PPMI study has already actually deployed a lot of the uh, tools and, and resources to be able to measure these proteins and RNA and DNA that Bradford was just discussing. That's that omics work that you might have heard of, right? Exactly. So omics technology is the way that we look at some of these small components, right? So genomics, which is perhaps the most common, uh, is the study of the genes. And you can look at all the genes that are present in our body. Uh, there are other components, there are other types such as transcriptomics, which looks at RNA, and proteomics, which looks at proteins. So really a, a fairly comprehensive toolbox for looking at all these individual measures. And we're deploying all of those individual types of uh, tests in our PPMI cohort. And one of the most special things I think about PPMI is the fact that it makes all of the data that's generated through the study available to the research community at large for free. Out of PPMI, the largest disease-specific data set was created with RNA sequencing. What's the significance of that project? Uh, essentially, we've taken the individual RNA-seq data from all of those subjects, looked at them across time, and that allows us to really look at very small changes that might happen uh, at the RNA level and really add those up to try to understand how, again, it might interact with other risk factors so that we can understand how PD both develops and progresses for individual patients. We're expanding the scope of that work through other partnerships, the Accelerating Medicines Partnership, right? Can you tell me about that one? Yeah, so AMPD is a public-private partnership spearheaded by the National Institutes of Health in collaboration with the Fox Foundation and other life science partners. Um, really, the AMPD effort is, uh, the goal is to generate as much data as possible from the genomics and the proteomics and the transcriptomics. Uh, PPMI is one study that's included in AMPD, but there are other Parkinson's-related studies that are also included so that we can generate more and more and more data and really be able to draw conclusions. Um, the idea, I think, is to uh, better understand whether new, new genes are associated with Parkinson's disease, whether there are proteins that uh, can be found through this data set to be dysfunctional with Parkinson's disease, and ultimately find ways to treat these specific uh, issues that are identified through this data set. Even researchers who might not be PD-specific researchers can get access to that data and really work with us to try to bring their specific tools and insights to the data that we're already generating. So a lot of data to find the answers that we need and sounds like a lot of people on the case. Great. Thank you both. And thank you for supporting Parkinson's research. Visit michaeljfox.org for more on this work and more on how you can help speed a cure for Parkinson's disease.